Okay, hello everyone. I can see panelists entering the room, which is awesome. Thank you so much. I know we tested out a, uh, a different invite system this week, so I'm glad to see you all here. Um, so I wanted to say good morning, everyone, and I hope you're having a wonderful Friday thus far. Uh, thank you all for joining us before the weekend. Uh, I think we're going to have a really, really exciting webinar this morning. So if you've attended one of our webinars in the past, welcome back. And to any new attendees, um, I want to say a big welcome. Uh, we've been focusing our webinars on employability recently. Uh, it's a really hot topic at the moment and one that we've been trying to help you all tackle with uh, practical and actionable means. Uh, this week, we're going to be looking at how you can be resilient in the face of rejection. Uh, and we have an incredible guest speaker, Dom. We're so excited to have him. I'll be introducing him in just a moment. Uh, I just want to start off the webinar with a big thank you to our sponsors, the University of Queensland. UQ will be hosting a free online open day on the 2nd of August for students, uh, which is the perfect opportunity for you to dig deeper into your study areas of interest and get your questions answered about studying at a world top 50 university. During the open day, you can explore UQ's world-class facilities through virtual campus tours, video or text chat with academics, staff and current students, watch exclusive on-demand content about all things UQ, including in-depth looks at their programs into accommodation, sports, scholarships and more. So uh, we'll just pop the link up to that excellent virtual open day uh, in the chat now so you can all have a look at that. So jumping back into this week's webinar, uh, we are talking about staying resilient during the job hunt. So for those joining us for the first time, uh, my name is Alex. I have spent the majority of my life living abroad in Bruno, Jerusalem and Malaysia. And I studied as an international student myself in the UK, uh, in the UK during university. So currently I am living and working in Adelaide as a part of the production team here at Insider Guides, uh, Australia's leading media company for international students that prepares, welcomes and supports international students coming to Australia. During this webinar with our wonderful panellists, please feel free to ask additional questions using the Q&A feature. You'll find that down the bottom of your screen. We'll answer as many of these as we can, both during the webinar and then um, with a Q&A session at the end if we have time, but we won't be able to answer any questions that are specific to your circumstances. So try and make the questions as broad as possible. Um, I'll also be publishing a poll about midway through the webinar and we'd love for you to all get involved. We're interested to learn more about you and how our future webinars can be helpful to you. So please keep an eye out for these future webinar invitations. They'll be on Facebook and in our weekly newsletters. Uh, we'll also have a quick survey link at the end of the webinar to hear your thoughts on today. And we'd really appreciate your ideas and your feedback. So I will now move on to introducing our incredible guest speaker today, Dom. So Dom is a TEDx and international speaker who has worked with organisations like Tesla, National Australia Bank, Volkswagen and Australia Post to help their staff develop resilience to thrive in periods of change, transitioning and restructuring. He has spoken on the TEDx stage twice, presented in over 12 countries, trained TEDx speakers and award-winning leaders, ran multiple 100K plus ultra marathons, as if that wasn't enough, and interviewed high performers like US Navy SEALs, Olympians, fighter pilots, surgeons, and Michelin star chefs. He has also been featured on entrepreneur.com, The Age, The Sydney Morning Herald, The Herald Sun, and news.com.au. Some of his other speaking clients include Google, Intel, New York University, University of Copenhagen, Chartered Accountants, Bank of Melbourne, EU Business School and Guinness Enterprise Centre. Welcome, Dom. Thank you so much, Alex. Pleasure to be on board. On Thank you show. so much for coming. So we'll delve straight in. Um, and Dom, I'm really interested in sharing your story. I've been lucky enough to speak to you in the past, um, but your story is so interesting and so unique. Mm. Um, coming from an international student yourself from Singapore to an international speaker. Uh, could you share your story with our audience? Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Dom. Um, for everyone who's joining us this lovely morning, so um, thanks so much for being part of this and thanks for taking the time to join us today. So um, I was born in Singapore and that was where I did my studies in mechanical engineering. So after my studies in Singapore, I did my internship with Motorola and back then um, the phones weren't smart yet. So uh, <laughs> you weren't pressing buttons on the screen, it's actually real physical buttons. So we did a lot of uh, mechanical testing for that phone. Mm -hmm. And then I did some work experience.
experience in the compliance department of a Swiss bank as well. So um, come February 2011, I've decided to uh, come over to Melbourne to do my postgraduate studies. So that was when I did my master's in engineering management, as well as a graduate diploma in business. So uh, by the time I finished my two years of postgrad studies in Melbourne, um, it was, I think, late 20. 12 to early 2013. So um, I was fortunate enough to get a job offer in a startup, a tech startup doing sales and business development and business yep. support. So, but unfortunately, I was actually fired from my first job uh, because I was fresh out of uni. I didn't know how to actually sell and market the company's products. So after a while, they decided that they had enough of me and they told me to just, uh, you know, you don't have to come into the office anymore. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, once, once I was uh, relieved of that position, uh, I've decided to actually spend some time to revisit my childhood dream of flying. So um, I went to do some private flying lessons and that was really fun for a while. Um, and after a while, I had to go for my aviation medical checkup. So the doctor actually found a funny condition in my blood whereby um, I produce more platelets than the normal person. So she said that, you know, because of this, you actually have a higher risk of getting a stroke Dom. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't risk putting you in a cockpit of a jumbo jet with hundreds of passengers. You know? Like what if things happen? So because of that, I couldn't fly anymore. And I was back to square one, back into the whole job search process. Mm -hmm. So I thought that um, after that episode of adversity, I thought I was done, uh, but I didn't actually realize how tough the jobs market was, especially as an international student. So. I had to endure 526 employer rejections over the course of 561 days, which is about one and a half years before yeah. securing full-time employment. So the day I managed to get a job offer, I went into my sent folder in my email account. I counted the number of resumes I've sent mm. and it's 526. Wow. Um, over how over, long? So this was over a year? Over uh, a year and a half. Wow, so, yeah. um, that's like a resume a day. Exactly, exactly. So some, sometimes I, I posted a number of jobs a day. Uh, sometimes you need a few days to actually put your application together. Yeah. Uh, because some students, you, you might be applying for graduate programs and there's, there, there's so many stages and hurdles to jump through. Uh, you have your online psychometric assessment. You might have a phone interview. You might have a group interview. You might have the online um assessment center and then you have the one-on-one -on -one interview so you have to jump through so many hoops and then uh, bang you get a rejection and then you have to start all over again so I totally understand it um, coming up from that side of um, things so definitely keen to, to see how we can explore more on this yeah area. brilliant so as you just said resumes play an integral part of your story um, obviously all of the background with your with your flying career um uh, i'm sure a lot of students can relate perhaps not to that specific experience mm. but you know there's a lot of times where you've you've always just kind of had one thing that you've always wanted to do and for someone to turn around and be like no actually you can't do personally i always wanted to i know i wouldn't but you know being an astronaut but because i don't have 2020 vision it's not an option oh. for me obviously not the same as your experience but you know uh, you know when you're when you're a graduate and you're kind of of just at that time when you're trying to carve a career path and you found something you think is so perfect for you hmm. to then have that taken away so out of your control um, is an experience I imagine a lot of our audience um, may have felt. Mm -hmm. um, but going back onto resumes, uh, again, they play an integral part of your story. And in the past, you've referred to what you did as the spray and pray method. Mm -hmm. Could you explain this further to our audience? Yeah, so pretty much the spray and pray method is you literally copying and pasting the same resume uh, for every single job that you apply for. So when I was uh, when I was deep in the, the darkest moments, uh, I call I call that phase the dark age in my mm. career. Um, so when I was going through the dark ages, um, I remember I was just sitting in front of my computer in my room. Uh, it was a grey, gloomy Melbourne winter. So everything was grey. The walls were grey. I was feeling grey. <laughs> Uh, and all that. So I was just, I was just sending out applications after applications, uh, applying for whatever positions I could get my hands on. So engineering management, engineering, project management, business consulting, marketing, admin, filing, newspaper delivery, anything that I could do to yeah. pay the bills. So just copying and pasting. And 
the thing about if you do that is that recruiters can tell straight away whether uh, a resume is tailored or not because mm -hmm. they look at hundreds or even thousands of resumes a day. So uh, the fact is that recruiters actually don't read resumes. They scan through resumes and they scan them for about seven to 10 seconds. So if they find out that your resume is not compelling, mm -hmm. if there's nothing that's outstanding for them uh, to get them to read further in detail, they will most likely put it aside and move on to the next application. Yeah. So um, I guess the important thing for this is to make sure you, you tailor your application and don't just spam your resume. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you said, Taylor, your resume, just to really break it down in simple terms. So what can an international student be doing and putting specifically on a resume uh, to kind of go further than, you know, just copying and pasting the whole thing, um, getting past those keyword searches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely. Um, so there are two things you want to be aware of. Uh, so the first one is definitely tailoring the, the resume to the particular role you're applying for. Mm -hmm. So which means that you want to include uh, certain critical keywords in the industry which you are going for. So for example, if you're applying for an accounting graduate position or a role as a grad graduate um, auditor, for example, um, yeah. because I have placed students into accounting internships, so uh, I understand this. Um, so you want to include keywords pertaining to the accounting in industry. So mm -hmm. things like uh, tax, things like invoices, audit, payables, receivables, and all that. Uh, if you're applying for a position, for example, as a data scientist or a data analyst, uh, you want to include keywords like um, Python, R, Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, visualizations, uh, heat maps, and all that, because yeah. those are uh, keywords which industry professionals are very well familiar with. So the, that's the first part. Uh, so tailor your application to the roles you are applying for. The next one is that you want to ensure that your work experience um, in your resume, they are both specific and quantifiable, right? So what we mean by this is, um, for example, if you've worked in 7-Eleven or you've worked in Maccas before, um, talk about specifically what did you do? Did you serve customers? Did you wait on tables? Did you handle the till? Uh, did you, uh, as a supervisor, did you help with the shift management? Mm. Uh, did you train new junior staff? Um, and if so, quantify them. So how many customers do you serve per day, per hour, per shift, for example? So maybe yeah. you... Uh, usually on average, you wait on about 15 to 20 tables per day. You serve about maybe 250 to 500 customers a day. Maybe you handle about $5,000 of cash per day. So um, the more specific it is, the more measurable it is, the more credible it will be. Yeah, absolutely. And as you just mentioned, um, for students that are putting together a resume, you can put down things that you're just taking as a job. They might be further, you might not think that they are steps to further in your career if you are working in, in a fast food industry or if you're working in retail. But it's the skills that you're gaining from that and the way that you can, again, as you said, Don, quantify what you're doing that is what's going to be impressive to employers rather than just saying, you know, I used to, you know, I would, I would, uh, I worked in retail. Then you can be like, I've gained customer service skills. I've gained money handling skills. Excellent. Exactly. So uh, to, to just add on, on your point is mm. that um, you, you need to be able to, as much as you can, provide proof and mm -hmm. evidence of you demonstrating those skills and putting them into practice. Because anyone can say that they're a great team player, but yep. how so? Anyone can say that they can perform under pressure, they are a good hard work, uh, they are a hardworking person, uh, they go the extra mile, but um, give us some examples to detail why and how. Yeah, what, uh, we've had this question in the past from students and we haven't gotten to it in a webinar. So we've had some students asking about the perfect length of a resume. And a lot of them are saying, I have so much experience, I've done so much volunteering work and I don't know what to pick and choose to tailor my resume. Um, a lot of them are saying their resumes are up to three and four pages. So what advice do you have for students like that? Okay, so um, ideally keep it to two pages um, mm -hmm. because put yourself uh, in the shoes of the recruiter, thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of applications and resumes per day. So if you give them an essay, um, you are actually, it, it's not working in your favor. Um, so give them something that's uh, clean, uh, professional and scannable. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want it to have uh, funky and exotic fonts. 
uh, you want the layout to be consistent and professional. Um, you, you also don't want it to be too long. So two pages is ideal if you have to stretch it three, uh, yep. but please do not go further than that. Yep. Brilliant. So do you have any helpful resources for students that they can uh, use to when they're building a resume or, or when they've got a base resume and they want to start tailoring it to a, a specific role or application? Do you have any resources you can um, offer? So, so for sure. Um, so do check with uh, the career service in your respective university because um, every university should have an established uh, careers service uh, to a certain extent. Uh, and they, they have full-time staff there um, that who are just dedicated to help you to increase your employability and increase your age in a job search. So uh, whether you're a current student or a, a fresh graduate, see if you can tap into those resources because um, that is something that's easily and readily available. That's the lowest hanging fruit. So go for it. Um, they deal with a lot of students and fresh graduates for entry-level positions. So go for that. Uh, if not, you can look at some of the job portals. They might provide a certain degree of career advice. Um, last night, I was looking at the SEEK uh, website and they do provide some free resume templates here and there. Uh, you can check that out. Um, you can also check out the some city councils. They do provide... Um, job seeker advice for their residents. So things like um, study Melbourne uh, for, for Melbournians and Victorians here, uh, do check out if you have an equivalent in your respective uh, uh, city or state. Mm -hmm. And then um, there is this association called the IEAA, which is the International Education Association of Australia. They do a lot of um, work for advocating and helping students who are internationals um, navigate um, the local culture and help them to become employable. Yep. So um, different things you can look at. So, um, so th th there is an abundance of resources out there. So uh, that is not the issue. So usually <laughs> the issue is that students not taking advantage of them or mm -hmm. students thinking that as long as they have the perfect resume, they will get the job, but yep. not really. So think of the resume as your passport to a country. It yep. will grant you access into the workforce, but how much you gain out of uh, you being in that job is totally up to you. So you still have to turn up for the interview. You still have to showcase your strength. And some of these are beyond the resume itself. So for sure, uh, put in a lot of effort um, in your resume. Make sure it's in tip-top professional condition. But don't stress too much about it because you still want to do things like networking and connecting with professionals and all that. Yeah, absolutely. So based on some of what we've just discussed, I'm going to launch our poll now. Um, and we do have a question for our audience members, which is, do you, um, are you, are you guilty of the spray and pray method? Do you uh, change your resume every time you apply for a job? So you should have that pop up on your screen now. There's a couple of other questions relating to today's webinar as well. We'll be really interested in getting your answers and then we will be able to comment on them a little bit later on. Um, so we're now going to get into the crux of today's webinar, which is resilience and perseverance. Uh, times are really difficult at the moment um, and a lot of students won't be feeling motivated. Um, so one of the areas I wanted to talk to you about, Dom, is this idea of resilience in the face of rejection. Uh, we hear regular stories from students about the constant knockbacks through the job hunt. What's your advice for students who are in this situation? How can they stay positive and how can they stay focused? Mm, it's a very good point and uh, it's definitely a re very relevant and pertinent topic, uh, especially there's a, there's a lot of uncertainty going on. And um, like, you know, if we, if we look back a few years before when the jobs market was uh, really working in the favour of the candidates, so a few years back, before uh, the pandemic and the impending recession has dawned upon us. Mm -hmm. uh, it was literally in um, the employees market. So uh, employers were literally scrambling and bending over backwards to do whatever they can to attract the best talent. Yep. Uh, because, and, and some candidates, they do get multiple offers even before they graduate. So that was working in the candidate's favor. But right now, uh, due to the change of uh, events in the world, uh, the tables have actually turned. It's actually the employer's market as well because um, there is a shortfall in the number of vacancies and opportunities and there's a huge spike in the number of job seekers and graduates. So um, oversupplying candidates, undersupply in jobs. So um, very competitive. So um, the thing about dealing with rejection is that um, 
understand that rejection is normal. It is part and parcel of life. So the thing is that if you do not get rejected, it's either your goal isn't big enough mm -hmm. or you are perfect or you are in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it is part and parcel of real life. So whether you apply for a job, whether you approach a girl to ask her out, uh, whether you apply for a bank loan, for a house, mm -hmm. uh, there's always a risk of rejection. Um, so the thing is that don't, don't take it personally, just, just see it in an objective light. Mm -hmm. um, and the key takeaway here is that you must learn from your mistakes or from the feedback mm -hmm. which you can, uh, which you, you should try to obtain as much as possible. Because if you do not learn from that setback, you will tend to waste time making the same mistakes over and over again. Yeah. So um, one of the, so uh, I, I do tell my um, coaching clients that if you can learn something within three days, uh, would you rather learn something, learn the lesson in three days or three weeks? Obviously, three days because you save time. Would you learn the lesson in three weeks or three months? Obviously, three weeks mm -hmm. because you don't want to waste time um, going through the same rut over and over again. So yeah. learn the lesson, innovate, improve yourself, and then move on. Find bigger problems to face. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you've kind of delved into the next question I had, which mm -hmm. is when students are told they've been unsuccessful in their application, it can be really frustrating and devastating in some cases. So what would your advice be? Uh, should they seek feedback or contact the hirer or, or would you advise against this? Um, so from my standpoint, I'll say do it if you can. Um, mm -hmm. Feel free to do so because there's no harm asking. There's no harm trying. Uh, but don't be surprised if you don't hear anything because uh, right now, like we mentioned, it's the employer's market. So they have, um, they have the power right now. Um, they have a lot of candidates and applications at their disposal. So uh, it can be a bit merciless uh, sometimes and unforgiving. Mm -hmm. So if you don't hear back from employers, if you receive the stock standard copy and paste rejection email, like, dear Dominic, we regret to inform you that due to the high caliber of applications, yeah. your, your um, application is unfortunately unsuccessful. However, we'll keep your file um, for future opportunities should, we, should they arise. Um, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. It sounds so familiar. I've received so many of those. So yeah. uh, if that happens, um, just, just dust it off. Mm -hmm. Keep looking ahead and keep moving forward. Absolutely. And mm. say a student does get lucky in, in these circumstances and they do get some feedback, personalised mm. feedback on their application. Uh, what is the growth mindset and how can this help their situation? Mm, exactly. So uh, adopting the growth mindset is really important because um, one of the biggest mistakes job seekers make during the job search process is that they spend all of their waking hours looking for work. So I know that a lot of people say that if you are jobless, your job is to find a job. Uh, to a certain extent, yes. But if, imagine if you are spending six months, uh, if you are required to um, spend six months looking for a job and all you do is sit in front of your laptop, look at seek and apply for jobs day in and day out. Um, think about how your personality will be after maybe just give it one week. You know, the, the brain gets musty, uh, your skills get a bit rusty, you, you, you might actually be a bit socially awkward after a while. Uh, <laughs> and, and because if you, if you don't practice your technical skills, um, you might forget certain bits and pieces. Yes. So uh, my best advice is uh, make sure you evolve yourself during the job search. So yes, apply for jobs and all that. Apply for part-time roles, things that just uh, get some cash in. Uh, to pay the bills and pay the rent. There is no shame in that. Go for it. Um, yep. So while applying for careers in your field, you also want to do things like um, networking with industry professionals, connecting with employers, uh, coming on online events like this, engaging with uh, the speakers, presenters and all that, uh, beefing up your LinkedIn profile, volunteering even in an online capacity, um, working on your technical skills. So even for, I know I've, I've spoken to a lot of IT students, uh, mm -hmm. there's so many, so many things you can do. You can uh, maybe take a short course on Coursera on, or Udemy on uh, machine learning, AI, uh, robotics, uh, cybersecurity and all that. So just to keep your mind sharp and going. So that is really important. Yep, absolutely. If, 
if you don't do that, you might um, be stuck in your little bubble. So you receive rejection after rejection, and then uh, your, your mind can easily go down this negative downward spiral. So do not go there. Yes, yes. So within your role, Dong, uh, you help people develop their resilience and to thrive in a VUCA, which is a volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous environment. Uh, the current COVID-19 landscape, personally, I think could be described as VUCA. Um, what are some of the most effective ways international students can start building their resilience while looking for work specifically during this time, as you mentioned, during you know, an employer's market? and in general, as they work their way through the pandemic? For sure. Um, so VUCA, it's, uh, it's commonly pronounced as VUCA, if it makes it easier. <laughs> uh, and and this, this whole concept of VUCA actually came from the military. So uh, mm -hmm. I served in the military uh, back in Singapore, and I was, um, I'm, I'm connected to a, a few people who served in the US Special Forces uh, on LinkedIn as well. So um, they are saying that the, the whole notion of VUCA came about when they actually, uh, when military troops moved away from conventional warfare. So previously on the battlefield, you see the enemy with the enemy flag, yep. uh, the enemy with uh, a different uniform. Um, but right now, the whole landscape of war is very different because uh, if we look at the, the situation over in Afghanistan, uh, mm -hmm. Iraq or Iran, sometimes the enemy is dressed up not in military uniform, but in civilian clothes. So yep. the whole landscape of war is very different now. It's extremely unconventional. So uh, there are def definitely certain concepts which we can apply in today's uh, employment landscape as well. So um, developing resilience. So uh, resilience has to be um, applied in practice. So I like to call this uh, like resilience 2.0 is actionable resilience. Mm -hmm. So you need to apply it. You need to practice it. So um, a great example for this is to actually, when you are going through a very challenging job search period, you need to constantly uh, set yourself stretch in massive goals. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because you want to continuously challenge and push yourself. So for example, if you are comfortable connecting with five industry professionals per week, um, try to stretch it even further. So try to connect with 25 or even 50. So multiply it by 10 times or 10x. Uh, if you're comfortable spending two hours a week working on your programming project on the site, maybe try to stretch it to 10 or even 20. So you want to have goals because um, that will actually activate your drive and that gives you something positive to look forward to. Yeah, excellent. Hmm. So students understandably may be feeling really overwhelmed right now, trying to adapt to new lifestyles, transitioning to online learning, working through the pandemic, or trying to find new work where job opportunities seem really limited. How can we be finding opportunities in this chaos? Mm, so very good question. And let me just pop in two questions in the chat. So the first mm -hmm. question is this, what does this mean? And the next one is, what am I going to do about it? Okay, so for those who are listening, I want you guys right now to actually, um, if you can, take out your phone and open up the Notes app, uh, or even if you have an, um, an old school hard copy notebook. Yes. Uh, sure, yeah, it's amazing, Alex. So, uh, because we, you, you, you want to make sure you capture some of these nuggets and insights as we, as we chat. And if you don't take away anything from today, you must write down these two questions. So the first one is, what does this mean? Okay, so what does this mean? That's question number one. Question number two is what am I going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? Okay, and let me break this down as to how you can use this as maybe kind of like your compass or guiding light in chaos and uncertainty. So um, COVID-19, pandemic, lockdown, shutdown, isolation, blah, blah, blah. Um, crazy for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people are hurting, businesses are struggling and all that. So uh, the reality of the situation, it, it could be quite grim uh, if you look at the news and all that. So first question, what does this mean? All right. So look at it objectively and think about the implications. Um, so when people are in lockdown, when they are stuck at home, they are in isolation, it means that they are at home. Mm -hmm. All right. So instead of going out, they are now at home. All right. And then you ask the same question again. So what does this mean? So this, this could mean that they will need to eat, sleep. They'll still need to eat, 
They still need to sleep. They still need to work. They still need to be entertained. They still need to take care of their kids. They still need to do their household chores. Yeah. Um, so then you ask yourself the next, uh, the same question. Uh, what does this mean? So this means that um, they will be spending more time online. Mm -hmm. This this could mean that they are spending more time um, looking at their their screens, right? Um, and then you ask the same question again. So what does this mean? So this could actually mean maybe even good opportunities for online shopping from a, not, not just a business standpoint, but a consumer standpoint as well. Maybe it's a good opportunity for online learning. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a good opportunity for food delivery. Maybe it's a good opportunity for e-commerce or remote ways of working, yeah. right? So the first question is, uh, the first question of what does this mean allows you to actually take this big, hairy, tricky problem and actually um, cut off the different layers as if you are peeling an onion mm -hmm. until you reach the core whereby you can start to see what the opportunities are. Because if you just look at it on a surface, uh, on a very superficial level, uh, it's just all about lockdown, uh, what kind of mask are you wearing, uh, can you even go out, when will we be going out and all that, especially if you read the news. Um, and then the mind just goes into this uh, chaotic paranoia mm -hmm. right uh, but if you just spend time to look at things objectively what does this mean and you just dig deeper right and then you might be able to uncover some of the hidden nuggets and opportunities right yep. so that's the first question what does this mean the next question is um what am i going to do about it all right so um this will actually put you in a position where you force yourself to be practical and constructive because i know it's easy to blame things I've been there myself when I was sending out my fourth, 400th resume. Uh, I was just like, okay, uh, is, is it my parents' fault? Is it the government's fault? Is it the economy's fault? Is it uh, my university's fault and all that? Uh, it's easy to point a finger and all that. Uh, but when you ask yourself, what, what am I going to do about it? Um, then you start to think about, are there any um, resources uh, I can get my hands on? Mm -hmm. Are there any things I can work to improve my skills? Are there anything, uh, is there anyone I can connect with to give me some encouragement and empowerment to help me think bigger, uh, even when everything else is going crazy? So mm -hmm. what, um, first question is, what does this mean? Second question is, what am I going to do about it? Very, yep. very important. Yep, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we've had a question here in our Q&A from Lucy. Mm -hmm. um, she's saying that many jobs at the moment are looking for citizens and residents of Australia. Um, some of them clearly state it. Uh, others ask you from the beginning what your passport is or what visa you have. Most of them, this is all Lucy's question, most mm. of them don't say that that's the reason you cannot pass the first round, but some are very honest and have told me, sorry, we are um, preferring citizens slash residents. So how can then an international student overcome this kind of scenario? And she's followed that up and said that she is uh, planning to apply for a postgraduate visa for two years. Mm. Is it worth telling employers that? Mm. I understand that that's her particular circumstance, but I understand there's probably a range of our audience that maybe mm. are considering staying in Australia after their studies have ended, but are still looking for work at the moment and might be struggling due to their background. Mm. Okay, so uh, let me just be very frank and honest because I can speak from experience. So I know that it, it sucks. Uh, and I've been there myself. When I was studying, uh, to, to, to tell you my, my story, uh, when I was still going through uni, I went to this, uh, this careers fair um, that was held in, I think, Wilson's Hall that's uh, in Carlton Gardens. So uh, when you go in there and you see the employees with their booths, it's so brutal a few years back whereby literally they had this um, this cardboard panel and with three check boxes yep. the first check box is uh, Australian citizens the second check box is permanent residents mm -hmm. the third check box is international students nine out of ten employers only have the first two check boxes yep. so that is how hard uh, how hard and how harsh it is so I can speak from experience totally understand how some of our friends in the audience are feeling. Um, so certain things are beyond your control. I've spoken to employers in the big top tier firms and all that, and some of them, um, they, 
they truly want to empathize and help international students because they see the potential, definitely. But it's because that recruitment or hiring decision is not made by them. It is made by head office and they don't have any control about it. So in that case, um, it is pretty much beyond our control. Yep. Don't stress, look elsewhere, right? So um, one piece of advice I give to international students is um, don't just look at top tier firms, look at the mid tiers as well as the smaller companies because some of them, you might be surprised, they, they might be actually more flexible in their hiring policies mm -hmm. because they are the ones who can make the decisions. They are the ones who are a bit more flexible than their multinational counterparts. Mm -hmm. So feel free to reach out to them. Also, um, consider reaching out to startups because uh, they can literally do anything. And some of startups, they have received funding, so they might be able to pay you and you can get experience. You'll be able to work on a range of projects to really utilize your skills rather than being shoved in a box uh, somewhere in a huge corporation. So uh, think about the different opportunities available. And for the question about the postgrad visa, um, if you're able to express that in your cover letter saying that um, I've just finished my studies and an international student, um, keen to apply for a position in your company, uh, but just to inf let you know also that I've put in my application for the postgrad 485 visa or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. So um, leading on from that question, you know, trying to find these opportunities, uh, do you have any resources or suggestions for where international students can look for jobs um, during this time? Definitely. So um, if I can get rough to pop in the bullet points, um, so things like, um, LinkedIn or even the primary job boards like Seek, Indeed, Career One, Jura, Etsuna, and all that. So these are like the mainstream uh, job boards. Um, there's also uh, the secondary job boards. So things like uh, Gumtree and Sidekicker. Actually, let me see if I can post this. <laughs> Ah, there you go. Cool. Uh, and also uh, your university job boards. So um, every single university, uh, I know a lot of them use Career Hub uh, and I use it a lot as well. So uh, and those are for their specific university students, um, whether fresh graduates or current students. So look at that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Certain city councils or government bodies might have their own job boards as well. Yep. Um, so look at these different sources. Um, the other source you can look at is actually your personal networks. So feel free to make a few phone calls, send a few emails or even text maybe your friends or mm -hmm. uh, your seniors in uni who have already entered the workforce a few years uh, ahead of you to say that, hey, um, I've just graduated with a bachelor's of blah, 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 or a master's in ABC, keen to kickstart my career. Would, yeah. you, um, would you know of any uh, opportunities in your area or would you know anyone who might be hiring? Yeah, yeah. excellent. So it's just, just put out the feelers. Yeah, brilliant. So uh, we're getting a lot of qu uh, interesting questions in the Q&A, um, mm. but we'll keep going with the ones that I've got here because a lot of them are going to tie into what we're discussing. So, um, Dom, opportunities don't necessarily have to be jobs in this sense. Um, they could be work experience or volunteering efforts, for example, that develop transferable and work-ready skills. Can you tell us a little bit more about transferable skills and why they're so important nowadays? Yeah, amazing question, Alex. So uh, in the question, there's a, there's a part where you talked about opportunities. And mm -hmm. in a recent industry panel with some uh, top tier employers, I actually asked them this question. So imagine if a student is in lockdown, they can't do much, you know, I know that it's good to be able to work in Maccas or in a cafe and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. But what if, because those businesses might be struggling as well. So they might not be able to hire that many students or workers. So if they're really stuck at home, they can't do much. What else could it do? Then I asked them, um, you know what, what if a student starts their own side project, their own side hustle, their own side business to actually take an entrepreneurial approach to this? And actually all of them said that they, they, they will actually favor it. Like uh, some of the candidates they interviewed or shortlisted has actually started their own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's so many creative ways you can uh, allow yourself to put yourself out there. Uh, and so the... Um, Touching on a transferable skills, so um, technical skills are definitely important because uh, employers need to know that you you have the, the right um, industry skills. So if you're applying for an engineering role, obviously you need to have an engineering background, right? Yeah. Um, but 
on top of that, actually, your soft skills are more important because uh, the employers I've interviewed, they say that they are actually looking to hire you as a person, as a whole. They're not hiring you for a, uh, for a basket of skills or tech skills, uh, but they're looking to hire and engage you as a holistic person itself. So um, look at different ways to build up your soft and um, enterprise skills. So things like uh, your communication skills, leadership skills, problem solving skills, um, whether you do it through your side hustle, whether it's through volunteering online or whether it's through your part-time job. Yeah, excellent. So I'm just going to end the poll now because we do have a question about uh, transferable skills in there and I'm going to share the results with all of our audience now. So what I think is really interesting based on what we've just discussed with transferable skills, we asked the question, what do you think is the most important and desirable transferable skill to employers? So we had a split 40% um, of our audience said that teamwork they believed was the most important skill and another 40% said written and verbal communication and then much fewer votes for things like mm. leadership, research, creativity and time management. In your experience, Don, what are the transferable skills that employers are looking for? So uh, especially for entry level and graduate positions, communication is one of the biggest ones. Mm. So uh, for those who put in uh, that, that choice, uh, you, you're, you're spot on. Um, and then the other skills are kind of like closely tied to it. So um, let's let's talk a bit about uh, communication. So communication is um, it's it's how you interact with people. So whether it's through like this written or verbal form, um, but I guess from a candidate standpoint, it's also how you express yourself. Mm -hmm. So how you carry yourself in an interview, how you're able to articulate your past experience, because I know that a lot of international students, they are uh, a lot of them come from backgrounds whereby they do have a lot of good work experience in your home country. Some of you might be um, manage, managers in top tier firms back in your home country. And then when you come here, um, you might be, be a few steps back, but you, you, you still want to work up uh, your way up on the career ladder. So mm -hmm. you need to be able to express that as to how those are uh, relevant in the, the role you are applying for. Yeah. And I know from, especially for uh, maybe people from an Asian uh, or Eastern background, um, sometimes we feel that when we express ourselves, we might come across as boastful or prideful or being arrogant, but that's not the case because um, no matter what, you need to be comfortable selling and showcasing yourself because yeah. if you're able to prove it and um, back it up with evidence, um, then you're not, you're not really bragging because uh, you have substance, right? So you need yep. to be able to be confident to do that. Yep, excellent. So we've actually just had a question come in from uh, Ramanan in our Q&A and he said, do we really need all of the required skills when applying for jobs or can you improve our skills after joining the company? How would you approach that situation? Because I mean, to mm -hmm. a certain extent, you do need those skills, but on the flip side, there are things that you are going to learn on the job. Exactly. So I'll say uh, maybe just as long as you can fulfill maybe 70% uh, ish of the job requirements, just apply for it. Mm -hmm. uh, because if we, if we look at, um, not to be political, but if we look at the, the US itself, if we look at who, uh, who is leading the country, um, mm -hmm. you know what, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy example of, uh, you know, you might not have experience, you just apply for it and bang, that person gets the job. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so in your case, um, for us applying for different roles and positions, uh, as long as you have about 70% of the job requirements, because the thing about recruiters and employers is that they always want someone with 25 years of experience, mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to pay them um, maybe at a graduate level's wage. So they want so much bang for their buck. Um, so definitely there's, there's some wiggle room. So yeah. uh, there's no harm applying. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. We've had another question here in the Q&A, um, which is whether we have any comments about international PhD graduates that are kind of marked with the overqualification um, symbol <laughs> mm. and uh, are then unable to find, you know, a, a number of jobs that perhaps they're qualified for, but then um, are not getting the jobs that they're underqualified for. Uh, mm. Is there any tips for students in that position or graduates in that position? Okay, so uh, to be frank, I might not be the best person to answer that mm -hmm. question. So 
Uh, but what I can say is that I, I, I've heard of some candidates who actually remove um, some of their post-grad qualifications. So okay, they, interesting. They, they don't appear as being too overqualified. So mm -hmm. um, see if that works. Uh, but I think the best is would be to speak to someone who has actually assisted uh, post-grads in that level um, yep. to look for work. Yeah. Excellent. And just one more question on resumes that's popped up, uh, which is, should international students be including lecturers and local friends as referees um, if they've already included previous employers? Okay, so uh, the thing about referees is that, um, first and foremost, make sure you ask them for permission before you list them. Some international students whom I've uh, spoken with or mentored, um, they just put in anyone who they've uh, uh, worked with before without even asking them. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure that it's, so ideally, uh, you want someone who is of a, of a more senior level. So someone who's a team leader, a supervisor or manager, uh, someone in your most recent job that would be amazing. Yep. Right. So if you work in Meccas, obviously, maybe your shift supervisor or even um, the, the manager of that, that, that chain uh, mm -hmm. or that restaurant, uh, that would be good. Uh, if, you, uh, if you don't really have much work experience, maybe if you have volunteered in a not-for-profit, you can mm -hmm. uh, put your supervisor's details. Um, if you don't have that, then uh, maybe your supervising lecturer for some of your projects, yep. that could be another one as well. So uh, make sure you ask them for permission. That's that's very important. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want them to get a phone call saying, <laughs> we'd like to discuss this person and they can't remember they who you are and yeah. they don't know what it's about. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. So, Dom, on your website, you mentioned global mindedness and how understanding mega trends can put you in a better position to embrace change and then ultimately uh, improve your resilience. Uh, what sort of mega trends should international students be preparing themselves for and how? Hmm. Um, so, there, I, I won't go into those mega trends too much right now. Okay. I'll just give a, a, a brief overview and. Sure. Uh, we'll we maybe talk about what we can do about it. So mm -hmm. I always like to be practical and actionable. Um, so some of the, the good mega trends are things like people are living longer, people are uh, on general getting wealthier, people are also becoming more connected. So we live in a di digital world. Um, the world is becoming more and more connected. Um, countries actually literally becoming uh, borderless. So that's really mm -hmm. good. You can connect to anyone uh, from the comfort of your own home. Uh, I, I won't be surprised if we have some guests from overseas as well. So those yeah. are the good mega trends. The not so good mega trends are what I call the four horsemen of the yeah. employment apocalypse. <laughs> I, I, I just came up with this phrase um, last night. So the first horseman is um, AI and automation. The second horseman is um, the gig economy and outsourcing. The third horseman is um, the volatile and hyper-competitive marketplace. All right. Mm. And the fourth horseman is um, financial insecurity. Yeah. So um, if we look at things, um, the good side and not so good side, we can see that uh, AI and automation can threaten people's careers and livelihoods, especially if they're doing tasks which are um, very repetitive and pretty much low level, non-cognitive functions and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you look at things on a broader scale, um, definitely it's good to have a certain degree of uh, digital literacy and tech skills. Yeah. So, it uh, doesn't always mean that you need to do programming, but you need to be able to uh, be comfortable embracing new technologies. So yeah. things like working online, uh, online collaboration tools, uh, Zoom, Skype for Business, Microsoft mm -hmm. Teams, Slack. I uh, remember Slack when we discussed this in the past, you were saying it's really important that people become now used to speaking on a webcam and confident mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. speaking with a webcam on them. Um, Exactly. Yeah, you're saying that's an important skill that we're needing more nowadays. Exactly. Yes, that's right. So, um, for example, if you're in the, you are a student, um, you're navigating your way through this whole job search. When you go and on, when you go on to an online event, and if there's a chance for you to be visible, um, do if possible, um, review yourself on the webcam and mm -hmm. unmute yourself. So, uh, literally put a face to the name because mm -hmm. if you are just um, if you, you, you shut up your webcam and all that, you're pretty much just 
another name in the crowd. So uh, you're literally being invisible. So uh, make sure you build up your digital footprint, your online personal brand, a good LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. as well as your online presence. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we'll now jump to the last question that I've got, but then we've got some Q&A ones I'd like to go through, which is, Dom, how can international students find motivation during this time, motivation to keep them going? Mm. So sometimes I know motivation can be in short supply. Um, mm. Like even before COVID-19, uh, sometimes I was waking up in the morning at about 5 or 5.30 just to do, to do a workout in 5 degree uh, winter weather, uh, yeah. not really motivating, especially when it's nice, warm and comfy in your bed. Um, so the whole thing about this is don't find motivation, all right? So put that aside, but instead make a decision, make a decision uh, and a commitment that you will thrive and prosper during this period of time, all right? So make up your mind that whatever happens, come hell or high water, you will find a way to succeed and you will be successful, all right? Mm -hmm. So make sure that is your internal voice. You set that as your default first before yep. you go into the world. All right. Then after that, you want to make a plan and you want to take action on that plan. Mm -hmm. So once you do that, you actually realize that motivation will chase after you. Mm -hmm. Because once, um, so this is, this is the power of momentum. Once you get things going, once you go to your first online event, you feel a bit inspired, and then you reach out to more professionals, you manage to secure a virtual coffee with them, you go on the virtual coffee, you get new industry insights, you get more ideas on how to uh, work on your side projects, you work on your side projects, you build up your skills, you are more attractive to employers. So it's, it's a good upward spiral. So use the, the power of momentum um, to, your, to your benefit and to your advantage. Yeah. So uh, what I want to mention is that uh, for those who are listening, um, there will be a time for you to take action. You know, I can talk as much as I want until the cows come home. Uh, but at the end of the day, the ball will be in your court. So um, if you are serious and committed about your own career success, uh, I'm actually organizing a, a webinar coming up just next week where I'll be talking about practical tips on how I managed to secure employment in just eight days and how you can stand out from the crowd um, amongst many other things. So um, if we can share that. Yep. Absolutely. So I have a slide up on the screen for everyone um, and we'll be putting the link in the chat now. So make sure to jot that down and join uh, this incredible webinar again with Dom. Um, we've just gotten a question in the Q&A as well from Megan and she's saying she's really struggling with a starting off point. So she's got her degree. She's struggling to even find work in um, in the fast food industry. Um, and I think attending a webinar like this with Dom is a really good step in the right direction. It is about furthering your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully everyone's had a chance to look at that quickly. Okay. Yep, excellent. So um, just a couple more questions from the Q&A that I've found and they're in a similar vein here, Dom. Um, so Morel said, uh, she just needs tips for feeling overwhelmed at this time. And another um, anonymous participant said, uh, how do you deal with your dreams getting crushed by reality? Uh, mm. Which is something mm. we kind of touched on at the beginning. So mm. we're talking about motivation and we're talking about resilience, but I think it's also important for our audience to know you can take a step back and you may need, might need to do that. Just collect mm. yourself and, and there are support services out there. If you need help with your mental health, um, there are people to talk to. There are, you know, there's help out mm -hmm. there. You just might need to find it um, or tell someone that you're looking for it. Help is not going to come to you. You need to go and, and ask for it. Um, do you have any other advice you have for students that might be feeling this way, just really overwhelmed? Mm. So uh, the thing about overwhelm is that um, this, this is a bit about my opinion on mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, this, this is my opinion. So mindfulness must be seen as um, two sides of the coin mm -hmm. right? or two sides of a dollar bill. Um, because if, it, if the dollar bill only has one side, it is invalid. It has no value. All right? So on one side, it is um, self-care, mm -hmm. right? whereby you rest, you recover, you meditate and all that. All right? So you take care of yourself. That's really important. Sleep well, eat well, take care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, everything else. All right? Mm -hmm. But on the other side, which some people don't mention, is actually self-exertion. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You need to stretch yourself. You need to exercise yourself. Uh, you need to um, step out of your comfort zone. Uh, you need to be able to embrace um, the, the, the pain of rejection, embrace adversity, um, because that's literally how you build up your muscles physically. You know, when you go to the gym, you actually, when you, when you lift weights, which you haven't lifted before, or do more reps, which you haven't done before, or when you're running, you, you go further that, that you haven't, uh, that you have done, haven't done before, um, your muscle fibers actually get destroyed. Um, and that's a good thing because after a few days, they actually regenerate and they're stronger than before. Mm -hmm. So the thing about overwhelm is um, do what you need to do. If you feel that you need to take a break after a long day, do take a break, all right? Yep. But don't give up. Always put one foot ahead of the other, all right? Yep. Um, this, this brings me to something which uh, I really want to share with you. Give me two mm -hmm. seconds. Let me grab something. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So, um, you know, when we, when we talk about um, my, my childhood dreams being shattered, um, what actually helped me to go through things was um, when I was in the pits of the job hunt, mm -hmm. um, I remember my, my parents coming over this, uh, from Singapore to, to Melbourne and we were in this restaurant, we were just having dinner. And then I was, I was literally so depressed, so discouraged. Um, so desperate even. And I, I just told my mom, you know what? Um, just give me any job, you know? Anything that can pay the bills, you know? I'll take anything. And then my, my mom just told me, you know what? Um, don't just think of yourself. Don't just think about paying the rent because mm -hmm. you need to think bigger than that. You need to think about building up a, a respectable career for yourself. You need to think mm -hmm. about uh, being able to support your future family down the road. So um, like quit this whining and complaining. Mm -hmm. uh, so she literally woke, uh, woke my idea up. Um, and from that moment, I made the decision that I'll never want to disappoint mom ever again. So this is something I want to show you. Um, yep. this, was actually, this is actually a careers magazine, which I started. Uh, during the job hunt itself, um, no magazine experience, no publishing experience, no um, design experience at all. So because at that point of time, I knew that other students uh, were struggling to work as uh, to find work as well. So through that magazine, we managed to interview a number of industry experts, and we were actually able to reach about three to four thousand uni students in just six months. Wow. And through that, I got a chance to do careers workshops in Melbourne Uni as well as RMIT. So that actually started my fuel and my passion for uh, investing in people's success. Mm -hmm. So it's through that when I remember there was one interview, uh, I literally walked in and then during the interview, I just opened up my bag and showed them the magazine that this is why I'm passionate about working with you because uh, through this magazine, I managed to impact thousands of uh, uni students to help them excel in their careers. So that's why I see that this position as a business and trainer, it's 100% um, aligned with my values and principles. Yeah. Excellent. So mm. what a brilliant cumulative uh, mm -hmm. note to end on there, Dom. Um, I want to extend a, an enormous thank you to you um, and uh, to everyone that's attended today. I'm sure our audience are feeling really inspired by your story um, and will come away with a range of not only practical and actionable job hunt advice, but, you know, advice on, as you said, taking a step back and allowing those muscles to regenerate. Um, it's a really difficult time and we understand that and we appreciate that. So you need to take care of yourselves. Um, I'd also like to once again thank our sponsors, the University of Queensland. Um, we've included a link to their online open day in the chat, so make sure to register if you are interested in that. The resources that we've shared today will all be made available on the Insider Guides website, um, along with the webinar recordings. So uh, I had, we had someone that had to leave uh, earlier on, and I'm sure they'd love to catch up on this. Um, they mentioned that they were having a great time, but unfortunately, life gets in the way of things yeah. like webinars. Um, so share the web webinar recording. If you have friends that you know are struggling with things that we've discussed today, people that are feeling overwhelmed and just need mm -hmm. a bit of advice, then please feel free to share it with your friends. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to go back and rewatch, take notes, as Dom said, get mm -hmm. a pen and paper, take notes on everything we've been discussing. We've also got a huge range of useful articles and employability um, interviews uh, with Dom as well on our website so you can check them out while you are there. 
Um, next week's webinar is going to be all about building a business as an international student and we'll be speaking to Paula Mills, the CEO of the Academy of Entrepreneurs, and Rita Doe, a former international student and founder of Paxi. Um, so we will, uh, details about that will come out on our social media and on our website. So keep an eye out if that's something that you want to pursue. Um, I just want to extend another huge thank you to Dom for all of the time that you've given us um, and make sure that everyone here is signing up for Dom's webinar. Um, again, the link is in the chat, so make sure to jot that down. Or I assume, Dom, they can check out your website or, or your Facebook. Yeah, so uh, do connect with LinkedIn. Um, and then if you have any questions, uh, drop me a line, drop me a message, and we can go from there. So uh, stay in touch. Uh, stay connected to your future uh, because you know what um, your future can always and will always be bigger and brighter than your past and present combined oh, it's a lovely thing to end on there thank mm. you so much dom so uh, everyone take that into the weekend with you um and have an excellent week we'll see you next week bye everyone thank you